Hello there, welcome to this episode of the You, Me and ADHD podcast. I'm your host Callum McCurdy and it's a honour and a privilege uh, to be sharing this uh, conversation with you with a dear friend of mine, uh, Miss Lisa O'Neill. Um, she is a person who um, pretty much bucks every trend you can uh, think about and essentially owns herself to a point where she creates trends herself. In fact, she is a trend, I reckon. Uh, she's very trendy. Um, she bucks the trend of uh, needing a uh, diagnosis. She says she doesn't need a certificate or a label or any sort of assessment. She knows who she is. And that's um, one of the key messages from this conversation is for her, the importance of knowing and honoring yourself first in order to be of um, value or service to the world or anybody else in your own world is you've got to um, nourish and harness and support and take care of yourself and especially know who you are. I have such a crazy brain, but I love my crazy brain. Okay, hey, uh, welcome to this episode of You, Me and ADHD. I've got an absolute corker for you today. I often start this by saying things like we've got a doozy or um, a corker or something. I think corker is the first time I've used this. Um, this is going to be magnificent. I already know that because um, I sense we've been here before somehow. Um, the, the, the guest we have on today is... Uh, whew, there's actually no words to describe her. Um, she is. She lives a world of magnificence, and I'll allow her to uh, speak to that as well. She's an incredibly um, intelligent, clever, unique. Uh, there is no one on the planet like her. She's a dear friend, uh, a mentor, um, a massive support in uh, my life, and someone who I've... I think uh, we've definitely crossed paths before. We've known each other for about four years, maybe a wee bit longer. Um, and but it feels like we've we've lived a lot of life together. Um, we get each other, which I think we'll come across today. Uh, I'm delaying the introduction of this person because I know that uh, this is pro probably all the talking I'll get to do. Uh, she goes a million miles an hour. Uh, she is absolutely wonderful and um, I reckon uh, you're going to get so much out of this conversation even though I have no idea where it's going to go. We're going to go off on tangents galore and it's going to be beautiful and perfect. Um, and so I welcome to the podcast uh, Miss Lisa O'Neill. Hello, hello. How are you? Yoda, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm good. so good. I like, so happy to be talking to you. Oh, thank you. I like how you've just asked how I am and then answered the question yourself and um, went into it. And it's just perfect. Look at that. Big chair, gold top, retro gold sort of mirrored uh, earrings. Always on These are made by a woman in Omaru who hand makes them. And I love her. I love supporting local people making cool shit in their kitchens. You know, like I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like crafty. That's the story I tell myself. And she's just very cool and I, I love her. Are yeah. they are they kind of repurposed? Are they, are they bits of... No, I don't think so. The brand's called Lover Lover. And I just, I'm like, Lover Lover. Like who doesn't want to wear shit made by someone called Lover Lover? And, <laughs> and she just loves, and she makes really extravagant, glorious things things that you can decorate yourself with yeah and i'm excited about that actually yeah. you you do decorate yourself a lot don't you i love to decorate myself i love to decorate everything i think everything should be decorated the mm -hmm. whole world yeah and tell us about your um your is it now is that pink or is it purple the chair behind you tell us about this about well it's that. officially magenta officially oh, right magenta um it's my favorite color and i had this chair i found this chair online being sold secondhand from an old prop company. It's enormous. It's like enormous. It goes, mild. it's so big and grand and ridiculous. Does it have big armrests? Yeah, it's huge. It's, oh. got, it's a big chair. And my husband laid an egg when I bought it. He was just like, oh my God. And it was navy blue. And I went, see, that will never do. It has to be magenta. And um, then I took it to a little man and he was like, there's nothing wrong with this fabric. And I was like, no, but it's navy blue and that won't work. So. Anyway, it's a big prop for my world. So, um, so, yeah. so you got it. Um, what do you call it? Re, recovered, recovered, redone, just re, just redone so, in my world. So, what of the chair is the original? Is it just the, it was the an, shape? It was originally an oversized 
ridiculous chair for a movie where they wanted an adult to look like a child. So it's a very big chair so that when you sit in it, you look little. Um, and I just wanted something ridiculous um, and that I could do like a YouTube channel podcast vibe from. And I wanted something really big and just stupid. And I found it. <laughs> that's brilliant. No, it's not stupid at all. Like that's oh. everyone thinks it is. No one likes it. My husband banned it from the house. He was like, it's ridiculous. My children hate it which makes me like it even more. Um, I'm like, oh, I love it more now. That exactly. Happy. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Yeah. Because it, yeah. it's, it's that standing out. It's like and... a big throne, and when I sit on it, I just feel like anything's possible. So all that sums you up perfectly. Like, it's magnificent, it's oversized, um, it is, uh, it's in your face, it is something that other people don't like and you don't care, so it's unash unashamedly uh, you. Like, this is all, all, all you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, the chair kind of is me. Yeah, it's just cool. ridiculous, and I don't. Yeah, I love, I love ridiculous, and I love big and grand, and you know, bright and colourful, and yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't do anything by halves as well, do you? No, nah. I'm definitely an extremist. <laughs> well, and and I think you're, um, like, you are more than this, uh, but you're very well known. Like, you've been on TV and you've done a whole lot of things, and you've had sort of multiple careers as well. Right now, I reckon you are New Zealand's most sought after keynote speaker, as well as a whole lot of other things, right? Um, and we're here to talk about sort of brain wiring, etc. What's yeah. the connection there? In, in speaking oh, my brain and... is crazy. Um, I have such a crazy brain, but I love my crazy brain. Like I absolutely love my crazy brain. And I meet so many people who are disturbed by their brains and who either go, oh, I'm different, so I'm weird. And I'm like, no, your weirdness is your genius, yeah. right? Like that's your genius. And then I meet people that go, oh, I'm really bad at this, so I'm no good because I'm not good at this. Or like, I'm terrible at so many things. Like really terrible like i'm a nightmare um but i'm okay with that because the upshot is i'm really really good at other things and mm -hmm. i just choose to focus on the shit i'm really really good at and i'm and i choose to just get other people to do the stuff i don't i just don't put myself through any hoops of doing stuff that i find impossible you know like there's so much my brain just cannot do so <laughs> i officially don't i haven't got a diagnosis of adhd i've never because I just can't be asked. I can't be asked filling in a form. I can't be asked even finding out. Like, I just find it uh, annoying. And uh, what I know is my brain is really odd. I know that in the research I've done from um, anything to do with ADHD or, you know, any sort of um, neurodiversity stuff, I'm definitely there. Yeah. Like my brain, I, I mean, yeah. So I've definitely got all the symptoms <laughs> I've got. I had all the symptoms as a child. Um, I, yeah, I've got all the, every, tick box that I could and I don't need a certificate because I'm quite happy with my brain yeah yeah and I know well so. I love that too right it's um you 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 accept who you are but you also um it's bigger it, than that though it's actually honoring who you are like yeah. there's definitely an acceptance of accepting it and then you go yeah but how can I make this actually my thing how mm -hmm. can I make this a really amazing part of me instead of just something and I go, no, well, that's me and we just have to deal with it. It's like, no, but how can you make yourself gloriously that? Do you know? Yeah. Like I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, I am so, I was talking to my business manager, Michaela, poor bitch. Um, <laughs> and I just said to her, look, I am so impatient, Michaela. I'm impatient. I'm intolerant. Um, I'm impulsive. And um, I'm all, I'm great with that. And yeah. I said, and, and the sentence that came out of my mouth was, well, we know none of that's going to change. <laughs> and she goes, exactly. And yeah. we just need to work around it. She's so great because she goes, no, that's what's so good about you though. She doesn't make me wrong. And mm. and I love that. And and she just goes, no, but that's, that's what's great about you. So just let me scoop up the other stuff. And I go, oh, I love you. I think that's the thing, isn't it? it, it uh, specifically around ADHD and other neurodiversities, hmm. people think we're wrong, right? And even the- We make like, ourselves wrong and then society makes us wrong. And everyone goes, you should, like at school, you should sit and, and, and absorb information and you shouldn't ask questions and, and you should just write down what the teacher says. And I'm like, yeah. why should I? I, I don't care. Well, Give even the, context. Even, like, the, even the like, label, like even the label doesn't help. ADHD, attention deficit. Okay, so there's a negative. Um, hmm hyperactivity disorder like there's no disorder there's a there's chaos but i don't think there's hmm. disorder um and there's no, no deficit of attention 
is there. Like, it's, it's, if anything, it's just a shitload of attention, right? And we can pay attention to a whole lot of things, you know? And that's, that's, that's magic. <laughs> I think we're geniuses because I think we care about the right stuff and and we have an inability to care about shit that doesn't matter to us, which I think helps you be better. All right, go go deeper on that. What do you mean? Well, I think I have an inability to, I care about the context and the detail. Yeah. And I don't care about anything in between. Uh Uh-huh. The big picture and the really little picture, I care deeply. Mm -hmm. Everything in the middle to me is just matter. Right. And it's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I don't care about that. Right. Do you know, like, I, so I care, and I also laugh at Michaela because I say to her, I think I've got ADHD and OCD, so I care about everything for a really short period of time. Yeah. Um, and so I care really deeply about the detail. Like, I go, this is what we want to achieve, and then I go, and I don't like the gap in that font. <laughs> and then... And she's like, hang on, the font doesn't matter. And I'm like, oh, I can't even have this meeting until we fix that font. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, that's so real. Like, that's 100% you know, like, real. I can't right? actually get past the font. I say to my husband when we're traveling, I need you to pass this truck because I cannot look at that sign anymore. It's not centered. <laughs> and I, I just, could you just pass the truck, please? Because I'm going mental. Because I'm like, I can't look at things that I just find ugly or upset my eyes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, yeah. So I get really detailly focused and then really big, but the middle bit, I'm not really interested. I just find mm. blah, blah. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things in there that I wouldn't mind um, sort of mm. digging into. One, one is like, I, I totally get the like context, but also mm. the detail, I do that as well. But that all that flips almost to be very similar to, um, to our experience of time. Like there's now and not now like 10 minutes from now or 10 years from now is exactly the same, right? Yep. Yeah? Yep. Um, yeah. And I'm the same with money. So numbers to me, 40,000 and 4,000, same. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And it does my husband's head in because yeah. I'm like, oh, that's not much. And he's like, at least it's 40,000. I'm like, oh, is it 40? Like, it's almost like my, my mind can't absorb zeros or something. I just don't care. Yeah. I just get a four and a pile of zeros and I go, I don't know, it was 40,000, 4,400 or something. But isn't that so yeah. good to go, doesn't matter. Like, let's not get hung up on it. Well, I don't even think money exists. I don't even care. Like, I'm like, just a made up bit of paper. You know, calm down. Like, it doesn't matter. Does it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, and I'm really, I'm really light with myself around that. Like, I don't, I find it really, I find it really amusing and I just don't care. It's other people's problem that hmm. I can't deal with numbers. Like, my accountant hates it because I go, like my accountant, I said, don't send me a spreadsheet because I actually just will get a massive headache and won't interact yeah. with you at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, like even with my accountant this year, Michaela went to them and said, these are the numbers Lisa wants. And then this is the detail she's going to pick at. Can you give her that first? Because if you start That's with clever. the boring stuff, yeah. you'll lose her and then you won't get her attention at all. Jeez, I want a Michaela. I'm... Oh, she's so good because she knows. And I'm like, I can't do boring. You know, I can't do boring. So mm-hmm. just find out, get me the information I need first. And then you've got a chance of capturing my my attention. But mm-hmm. if you give me the stuff I don't need first, you're dead to me and you'll never get me back. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, yeah, that's the thing. Because once we find something to go, I'm over this, it, there is no coming back, is there? I don't have the ability to, and this, that sounds really naughty and kind of, it is indulgent, but I don't really have the ability to pull myself back once my attention's gone. Yeah. And I kind of need the world to know that. So I'm like, just <clears throat> give me what I need to get the best. And I tell people all the time to get the best out of me, give me what I want first and then I'm yours. But if you give me what I don't want, you're never going to get yeah. I'm gone. And I think knowing what <clears throat> you need from people and situations is really useful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like with my kids, I want to know the end before I get the blah, blah. Right. So you know yeah. when kids tell you something and they'll give you a whole, oh, hey, mum, so I was walking down the street and then I saw my friend and then I go, okay, you did it. where are you? I'm in jail. Okay, good. Start with I'm in, mum, I'm in jail. How did that happen? Let's go back. Like that's actually a real conversation with yeah. my son. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's like, I need to know the instant, the what's happened and mm-hmm. then give me the detail. Don't, People like to build up. They go, oh, well, you know, you won't believe it, but I was out and I saw this and then that happened. And I'm like... Well, that's how we're told 
to tell stories, right? The impact of a good story is to have the I beginning, middle, and end. Book before I read the first one, you know, like, I want to know the ending. You know, when people say, "Oh, I saw a movie and oh, I won't tell you the end because that'll spoil it," I'm like, "No, tell me the end because yeah. that'll make it better." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because... I want to go into the movie going, "Did he die?" And they go, "Yeah, okay, okay, great." Now I can sit back and go, "Right, he dies," and tell, show me the rest of the movie. Yeah, because but... you because you can you, that, place that, and then you go, "All oh, right, the build up to all this that's going to be exciting." Yeah. I'm with you yeah. on that, 100%. Yeah. Like, give me the end first. I want the end first. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, so directions and time and money are the things I'm just such an epic failure with because my I don't think my brain absorbs them. Like, mm-hmm. even directions, I can't tell you where I am. Mm-hmm. I know I'm between here and the supermarket, but I don't know where because I don't care. I just figure I don't care. It's and need I, to know, isn't it? Like, what what do I need to know? And then yeah, and, 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 and my is so busy and has so many browsers open mm-hmm. that where I am, where my car is driving right now, is just not something my brain needs to even think about. No, 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 no. Are you like that with your calendar as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I work in, in three hour increments. Right. Three hours. Okay. First three hours, second three hours, third three hours. So a.m., p.m., evening. Right. That's it. Yep. What am I doing in the AM? And then once I finish the AM, I go, huh, now what am I doing in the PM? And once I finish the PM, I go, what am I doing in the evening? Um, and that, because otherwise I just get too befuddled and I can't be in the now. I need to be in the now all the time. So we will be trained and there'll be people watching and listening to this thinking, oh, you know, there's a, there's a, um, I don't even know the word for it, but it's kind of like, oh, she, um, she thinks she's, she's a bit, um, special and she's being needy and that sort of thing. But I think the flip of that is you are being you are you are doing exactly what you said earlier, Lisa, is you're honouring mm. who and how you are, right? And you're going and make, it, make the most of that. And I don't make any apology for that because I think we're all special. But if everyone got to know themselves and got to know what they needed to be the best version of themselves mm-hmm. and then told everyone the whole world would be better. Because instead we're all bumping around trying to be normal, whatever the fuck, not, sorry, I should, am I allowed to swear? You whatever, sure are. whatever normal is, I don't even believe in normal. Do you know what really annoys me is when I drive past schools that say something normal, intermediate, and I'm like, ugh, I, I could not even walk into one of those buildings that has normal <laughs> on the outside. Why do they call a school normal? Like, ugh, it freaks me out. Yeah, anyway, there is a reason. Someone explained it to me once and I don't I, care. I but, think, um, yeah, okay, I won't tell you this because. No, uh, you yeah. know when you see that like telco yeah. normal intermediate and I'm mm-hmm. like why, why would, that's like going you know not going where, there well it's like having a, a takeaway shop called average hamburgers like why, why would you go there <laughs> <laughs> like, run of the mill yeah <laughs> Yeah, and I think if people, more people could identify that they're special and that what is their specialty and then get get their, meet, their needs met yeah everyone improves because the reason people are angry and bitter and and not fitting in and not achieving and not living the way they want to is because they haven't got their needs met and they Mm. don't know what their needs are first Mm -hmm. of all and if you don't know what you want you can't get it and then we've been taught that we can't have what we want our whole lives so there's a whole issue with that keep talking you you've written all about this right like everything oh, you yeah. want i'm like, all about wanting man this is a, oh this is a big book like this is beautiful the model in that and the way you take you sequence things through that that is that is genius um and this is a beauty as well do you want to talk about either either of yeah, these well, shameless um want, absolute like plug one. and we and we where people can get these as well would be a great lisa yeah, so everything you want is for me about literally everything you want. And I think there's things that we all want as a human and we don't know how to get them. Like people say, oh, you should, have you got any joy in your life? And you're like, I don't know. Where do you get joy? Like at the supermarket? Like, I don't know where to get joy. I don't know what joy looks like. And and it's like, oh, I want trust. And you're like, cool. How do you get trust? Like no one teaches you. Mm. We teach everything, all the wrong shit to everyone and it's like no one knows like people say oh i just want to have more energy it's like cool how do you do that and and no one teaches you what i do but i I, like i spend my life teaching people how to have more energy how to get the things that they fundamentally want in their world which Mm -hmm. is control and trust and action and and belief and all the big stuff but there's stuff you've got to do to get those things right there's boring human stuff um like support and fixing your health and 
you know, there's so much in that that, mm. that you need to get right. And I just watch people all the time and kind of go, this is what you're doing really well and this is your little gap. And if you can fill that gap, oh mm. my God. Yeah. And and I think we've all got gaps and just knowing you've got gaps, but what is yours? Um, and there is actually a little diagnostic that's free on that on my website. So you can get the books at lisaroneal.co.nz. But if you click on the diagnostic, it will, a little quiz, and it will tell you what your strongest three are and your weakest three. Oh, yeah. So it's quite surprising sometimes. You normally know one of your weakest, but you, you go, ah, and it makes sense then. The reason I'm out of control is because I've got no support. Mm. Or the reason I'm out of control is that I don't manage my time very well. It's all interlinked. But, but, yeah. yeah, and so so linking back earlier, you said you don't need a certificate. So diagnosis of ADHD, you don't need. However, what I think one of your superpowers is, is your ability to diagnose, not in a clinical sense, but just to know, zero in on what's going on for a person. And that's often the thing that they know and they're hiding or they fear it or they haven't yet made a connection. Like I think you're supremely good at, um, at understanding where people are at and what the next thing could yeah. be for them to do. So I'm really judgmental. Like I'm ridiculous. And people go, oh, you shouldn't be judgmental. I'm like, it's my superpower. But I use it to triage people's needs. Yep. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I am very judgmental. Like I look at everyone and go, this is what's right with you. This is what's wrong with you. These are your gaps. This is what you need. And it's really useful for me, like when I'm yep. mentoring people, because I can really quickly go, you're incredible at this. And people are like, am I? And I'm like, yeah, you just can't see it. And I go, and you're really shit at that. And they go, Ooh, how did you know? Because they've spent their whole life trying to cover that up. <laughs> I think like... also, I think also with the, um, when you say, this is what's right with you and what's wrong with you, that's not, um, it's not, it, it's never critical. Like, yes, you're judgmental and yes, and you're very well, it's forthright. Oh, 100%. Like it's for you, right? yeah. Like it's not done in a, you're really crap at this. And it's more around, because people say I'm really bad at this. And I go, cool, don't worry about that. That doesn't matter. But what are you really good at? And we don't focus enough on what we're really good at. Yeah. And I loved an interview I watched recently with Will Smith and his bio's coming out in November that Mark Manson's written. And he talks about these four things in the world that he's world-class at. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't do those four things, he's doing the world an injustice. Yeah. And every time he's not doing those four things, he's out of his zone. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so true for all of us. Like, what are the things you're really, really good at? Mm -hmm. Just do more of that. Just do more of that. And don't worry about the stuff you're bad at. Get someone in. Thanks. And just admit that you're no good at it and then find someone that is really good at it. And what we do is we employ people like us. So you go, oh yeah, I'm going to work with you because you're just like me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, you don't need someone more like you. Correct. You need the opposite of you. Yeah, yeah. And I think also we're, we're watering ourselves down by trying to be all to everybody or to fit in and like... Um, uh, to to not not it's stand like out. Doesn't work. Well, no, it doesn't. But also at, at work, what we do is we have these um, catch-all job descriptions, which go: you've got to be able to start this and finish this and do everything in between. And not many people can actually do that. And if no. they do, they water down everything, like all that um, supreme, the the superpowers, the gifts, talents, traits, all these great things that we can do. Like that, something's got to give, and it tends to be the stuff we're great at. And so we just become blah. Um, and fit in and average at most things and shit, we, don't, things we don't do average well at. no not at all and I, I, I don't I'm not good at doing stuff I'm not good at or interested in so therefore I don't really expect anyone else to mm -hmm. and so for me like when I um, became CEO at Thought Leaders Business School I sat down with all the staff one on one and said what do you hate what do you hate about what you're currently doing in your job and they were like oh no, oh nothing. And I was like, no, don't be polite. Just tell me there's bits of your job you hate. And they were like, oh yeah, I hate this. I'm like, cool, don't do it anymore. And they were like, what? I'm like, just don't do it because <laughs> someone else will like that. Do you know what I mean? Like I have mm. a cleaning lady who loves cleaning. Like she's like, thank you for letting me clean your house. I love cleaning. I'm like, you're weird, but good for you. Yeah. And so it's better that I let her clean. One, because she loves it. Two, because she earns money. Three, because I'm contributing to her family. Yep. Four, because I don't have to do it. So just find people that love. The wonderful mm. thing about humans is we're all different and there's someone out there that loves. I've got people that go, oh, I just love organizing inboxes. I'm like, do you? Get in mine, because I can't do it. <laughs> no. like, I just can't do it. My inbox just feels like the biggest shambles. Yeah. And I just want to walk into it and shut the door and walk out. 
you know, if my <laughs> inbox was a room, I would just shut the door and leave. Like mm-hmm. I'd just like, oh. And, but someone who goes, nothing makes me happier than organizing emails, I'm like, good, come and work for me. Yeah. Because that's what I need, right? Okay, so how have you hacked your life, um, uh, your profession, uh, and you can describe that however way you like, uh, Lisa. Um, how have you hacked that by using um, the way your brain is wired? Like how, have, how does that um, amplify how you do what you do for a living? Because I just do what I'm really good at, which I'm really good at speaking. Mm-hmm. I'm really good at inspiring people. I'm really good at seeing good in people. And if I just do those things, everything's better. And yeah. I'm... You know, and then I just, and, and then getting other people to do the stuff I'm not good at and getting other people to help me look good mm-hmm. is really important because otherwise my clients would go, oh, well, we emailed Lisa and she didn't reply or, you know, th- she didn't turn up because <laughs> she can't understand her calendar. Um, so for me to be good, I need stuff around me to make me better. And I think giving yourself the right support and knowing your strengths, you know, it's that same. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I've... Um... Oh, I was going to say I had the pleasure, the honour. Sometimes it's not um, of being of speaking at the same conference as as you on several occasions, um, and that's quite intimidating uh, because pretty much everyone's there just to to see you. So I've followed you. I've been before you. Um, I'm you are you are always like you are always the best uh, on the day, and um, I could. Uh, I guess quite selfishly try and get some tips out of you right now, but that might be a bit boring for uh, listeners and viewers of the podcast. But how, when you're speaking, when you're on stage and you clearly are in your element, um, I'm keen to know what's going on in your head and how are you reacting to things? Because there's an element of stand-up comedy. There's there's having really... Uh, clear, profound, but presented quite simply, um, messages in there, and you speak and say those things several times in several different ways, so it lands with everyone in the audience somehow, so you actually cater to people's needs. You're incredibly funny, but you're also um, really, really on point, and I'm just, and but it's very, very clear to me that you're actually going with the energy in the room as well. So tell us a wee bit about what you're doing. Well, I think you're right. Energy is everything. And I think one of the things as a speaker, people forget, people go, I'm a speaker and I'm here to present my material to you. And it's like, no, you're not. Hmm. You're there to give what that room, what it needs and what that room needs. So you've got to be really relevant, I think is the first thing. Like I basically spent, I spent a lot of time going, who am I speaking to? Mm -hmm. What's their world like? Like what is going on for them right now? When they walk into that conference, how are they feeling? Like what do they need and what do they want and what does the industry need what does their environment need like am i in auckland and they're you know just in a big lockdown or am i you know what what's going on for them so putting yourself in there i call it shoe shifting so Mm -hmm. putting yourself in their shoes is really powerful and i don't think enough speakers do it speakers stand up and go this is my message to the world and they don't actually care yeah. what you're getting out of it or what's being received so i think that's a really big part relevance is everything and that's um, uh, that's also uh empathy right it's like okay this is what you've um done. So, so the last time last time and i will let you finish um but if i can just jump in there the last time we spoke together was i don't know five five or six weeks ago and uh you finished you closed out the, the conference and the one of the first things you said was i've been waiting for this all day so i'm just going to take my time um so fuck it here we go and you so you kind of said what everybody else was was thinking and feeling it was like you acknowledge we're coming to the end of the day it had been a heavy day we'd had um all sorts of stuff um in terms of different types of speakers uh content dynamics um that sort of thing but you you owned the room but you also um were one of them i think in in the way you did that Um, it was really really clever wasn't deliberate I just literally was so excited I love being on stage like being on stage is the most exciting thing I can do and I'm more comfortable the bigger the room so I read a quote from Michael Jackson he said he'd rather be with 50,000 people than than three and I'm like I feel the same so the bigger the room people say oh my god you've got a thousand people is that intimidating I know it's really exciting 30 people intimidate me 3,000 no problem like because 
it's to me it's energy surfing and you've basically if you're a surfer you've got lots more waves if there's more people in the room and oh. so my mission is always to make them feel understood to make them feel okay and then to give them something useful that they can do as a result mm. and I, I think the way to make them feel good is to make them laugh like you know life's so boring i just don't think people laugh enough <clears throat> whether that's at an event or in life i just yeah. think laughing is something i do deliberately all the time and it's my favorite thing like just laughing is just so important and especially at conferences and things people are very serious and there's a role to do and we're mm. watching and we're here to achieve and blah, blah, blah. and I'm like oh yeah but you know what when you laugh and I, I when you I worked out once that people, a woman <clears> said to me oh you crack me up and I was like and I was thinking about that when I left the event crack me the whole concept of crack and then I thought actually when you crack something open light gets in so you need to crack them open so they're more open because people at conferences are quite like you yeah, so what are you going to do yeah. Could you be impressive? Because I've, you know, spent a lot of money to be here. And so they really, <coughs> you know, they do that whole, and then the, and it, there's a lot of expectation. And I think, um, and Matt Church, who's a, you know, good friend of both of ours, and he is an incredible speaker who I did some training under, and he's amazing. And ha one of the most important things he taught me is he said, make them like you before you go into content. And mm. people don't, they get up on stage and bash their content at people and go, these are the 10 things you should know about this. And you go, oh. and they go, I don't even like you. Why? And, and so for the problem is you don't even want to listen to them. So they've got to like you first. And if you can be a bit either funny, vulnerable, open, real, mm. they go, quite like you i don't know what you're talking about they look in the program and go what's the shit you're talking about oh well i like you so i'm going to talk to you yeah and i think that's really important if you can get them to like you um and just be likable mm. like don't be a dick because people go oh i'm on stage i'm very important you know and it's like no you're not actually you're not that important and it's a such a privilege to be given an hour of a company's time mm. I just think the amount of things, the amount of money, I always think about that room and I go, it's a thousand accountants. If I add up their hourly rate, that is so much money. Yep. I don't like I literally go, Jess, don't fuck this up, Lisa, because you've been given the wheel of all this. Like this is a very a big investment. Not only what are they paying me, what they're paying for the room and the lights and the bloody and the champagne, but what are they paying that collective room? Mm -hmm. They're never getting that time back. Mm -hmm. And it's honouring that, I think, is really important. So I put a lot of effort into honouring the room, the relevance, um, how I can make their life better. And it's not about me, it's about them. And I think that's the other bit, is just making sure they know you're there for them, not for you. And and I think also, like, you, I said you own the room, but you read the room really, really well. And that's, I think this is part of the, the energy surfing that you do as well, but you're really- I spend a lot of time in the room too. Like a lot yeah. of speakers walk in, plug in, talk, mic drop, walk out. And I go, you're an egg. You just missed all the relevance. And I will often be in the room for a long time because I want to know what yeah. the third speaker did and how the room all went, oh, when he spoke so that that becomes part of the energy of me closing up the day or whatever. It's really, yep. I think it's really important and I'm really nosy as well, I'm so nosy. But I, so I wanna know what's happened and I wanna know who was amazing and who was not good. And not because I'm competing with them, but because I can then know no, but that's you. Yeah, that's you serving the room, right? That's you. Yeah. you that's you talking about that. Um, the privilege of being there and honouring the people who have given up their time, even though you know they may have paid some money. But okay, yes, they've paid some money. They've given up some time and money, um, and you're sharing some. And one of the space things I them. really can't stand is when you sit in an event, which I do all the time, and four speakers come in and they've got four conflicting opinions on a topic, and the room's going, oh. But he said, be yeah. in service. And she said, just focus on yourself. And I'm so confused. And they don't know what to do then because they, they, they've then got to make, and it's yeah. like, so, and that's where I think it's really important that you wrap that up and, mm -hmm. and that it gathers, gathers together. Um, or that the organizer knows the energy that everyone's bringing and has checked in because conflicting messages um, are a problem like i had i was at a conference recently where people were talking about COVID, and the first speaker was just so like everyone should be vaccinated and bullying everyone about vaccination the second speaker gave all this information about why no one should be vaccinated the whole room was exhausted by lunchtime yeah but they were on this like oh now i don't know what to think and no and that's fine 
but it's like it's like a necklace and you're putting beads on and each speaker's a bead and if you don't tie it up at the end you just lose all the beads and it's just not a necklace mm. Mm. do you know what I mean like yeah. it needs it needs tying off and I I'm yeah. really passionate about events being well tied and well brought in yeah um, I yeah. love it like, I love that and I think events is so important to do well and I think your brain managing that so so it's that uh, the context and the detail we talked about earlier like you do that really well in in events like you're the um you're always the best speaker but you're also the mother of the room so you're 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 doing the MC. professional mother well that's you know you are horrible. well yeah and i don't mean that in any sort of insulting no, way just training right that's from having four kids and just constantly going and that's the thing you get in that role of are you okay are you okay are you eating are you good are you good are you yeah good? Are you good? so and you that's and role. i th- I think that's the the, the key um, key to a, a great event is where there's some seamlessness across all the speakers. And if you see the speakers having fun and that they know each other or are interacting well, and so you're really good at connecting speakers. Uh, you're the um, you're the um, the proxy or the pseudo uh, event organizer. So you do part of their job for them. You do some of the MC's job for them behind the scenes um, as, as well. And so you're keeping everybody like you're managing. Um, the energy the of the really entire personally. event. Like, yeah. I take it really personally. I'm like, oh, I'm the, whew, this is not my conference, but I'm taking it really personally that it goes well for you. And like, so I get really bought in. Yeah, yeah, you do. And and that's not control freak taking over, but I think that is perfectly sort of um, um, an undiagnosed ADHD brain working at its best, right? You're, you're just juggling everything, doing, and nothing's yeah. a problem. Like it's some it's... juggling. I'm really good at juggling. Juggling's <laughs> something I'm really, really good at. Another but book you wrote too, huh? Another book. Um, oh yeah, I've got that here. But the thing is about juggling is you've got to know what to juggle and when. So there's the old juggling. That's a long time ago. Look how young I was. Um, but the thing about juggling is this. You know, everyone's got twelve balls, but actually, just do a really good job of three hmm. every day and change the three every day. But don't try and do twelve. And that's kind of the point of that book. That book's about running two companies with four kids and how do you do it all because people say oh how do you do it all and i'm like well i do do it all but i don't do it all at the same time no Um, however i think um and i've thought of you as uh i can't remember the thing she had but in harry potter hermione got this thing off dumbledore that allowed her to be able to um experience um she could take multiple classes at once, like she could almost t- stop time and take different classes. And so she got um, endlessly qualified and a whole lot of other things. I'm just talking this up, but I think that's what you do. You're able to freeze time. Like you have, you're incredibly prolific in what you um, what you do, uh, the amount of work uh, you do, but what you produce in different uh, fields, uh, you always have time for, for so many people. Um, and it, to me, it seems like you have extra hours and extra days in the week. Um, and that could be perce- perception. You may be exhausted. I don't, I don't know. But I think you, like, you're just one of these people who is incredibly prolific, but generous as well. And, and that blows me away. I don't know how you do it. You're very kind. Um, no, I think, well, I think there's two things in it. One's priorities. So people are everything to me. Mm-hmm. So it's like I always have space in my world that if someone needs me, I'm, I'm there because people are everything. So if I was in the middle of something really big and someone in my in my world went, I'm, I'm in, I need you, I, I'm like, I'm there. And to me, people are everything. So people over process is one of my biggest things. Like mm-hmm. I'm just like, put people first. Um, so I think that's really important in, in every area, people are important. And then what um, spontaneous concentration um, is something Ooh. that I'm, re- yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been reading, I've been reading a, um, now what's her name? I've been reading this very cool book um, and it's it's very deep and very woo-woo and blah, blah, blah. But um, it's very good. And we love that though. The idea of spontaneous, um, uh, Gene Klein is this man's name and he is extraordinary. I'm just trying to find it. It's called Open to the Unknown. Um, and it's it's really beautiful and he talks a lot about living in the now like being very present and mm-hmm. about duality it's, re- it's really interesting but what i really liked about that is spontaneous concentration so i f- go where my energy is like if i feel like writing i write and i write i can write six blogs in like an hour because i'm just like i'm in that zone yeah um but i can't go oh yes at two o'clock on wednesday i'm going to write a blog just can't do it 
two o'clock Wednesday, my brain goes, nah, don't want to write a blog. But if I wake up at 3 a.m. and my brain goes, I want to write a blog, I just do it because I follow that energy. Do, and, do you, so honestly, you, you do that rather than fight it. You, yeah, I you, do it because I, I go with it because I go, I treat that as a gift. I go, oh, what a gift. I've just had a blog drop into my brain. I must get it out. And so, and I and I go, that's awesome. And then I use that. And then I give myself permission to go, it's 11 a.m. I'm going to take my pants off and go back to bed because I was awake from two till four writing blogs. Mm-hmm. Um, now that doesn't happen all the time. And I'm really big on sleep. So I, but I do go with whatever. Um, I think that's the ultimate freedom for someone with a fast brain mm. is to be able to do what you want when you want. And if you can set your life up, it doesn't, I mean, that's very idealistic. But if you can go, I'm going to give myself the mornings to do whatever and then not put anything in it. So you've got space and then you go, oh, I feel like doing that now. Mm. And then all the things I find, all the things I have to do, I feel like doing at some point, but I can't yeah. put them in in any order because I don't know when I'll feel like doing them. Mm. But I know what I have to do. So I have a list and I go, I, I need to do all these things. And I just go, nah, 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 hmm, yeah, maybe. And then I get really into that. But I, I can't be told what to do. It's I also very oppositional defiant. Mm-hmm. So being told what to do is really not okay. Um, and the minute someone says, check your, you know, f- I need you to go through your inbox and do your emails, I go, I'm not gonna. Um, but I might at four o'clock in the afternoon, sit down with a coffee and go, huh, I might actually check out my inbox. And I'm really into that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But you, you honor yourself as well. Like I think like you, you, you acknowledge. Well, it's, it's not, it takes, a, that, that's taken me a long time to get in there. And also yeah. in the beginning, there's some fallout because right. when you're not doing what you should do, you, there's some damage yeah. um, because you're not getting back to people. You're not doing, delivering on time you're not you're not whatever Uh Um, but you've got to be a bit gentle with yourself I think yep and I think the quality of what I do when I'm in the zone is better than when I try and force myself to do something that I'm not in the zone for like I I used to when my kids were little I I used to paint I love painting like I used to paint paintings but if I was in the zone for painting I like I literally didn't feed the children I just Mm. got it zone it was like i was so in that zone and i can not eat i can just i just yep. go into this like space where times yeah time blindness do. that's a real thing for adhd that's huge. yeah and i'm in this lovely it's heaven oh yeah it's a heavenly space yep. to get into and yet we resist it and i'm like well no, that's right sorry. We, we call it flow. Other people call it um, neglect, right? Because everybody else doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> I remember painting one day in my garage. And my daughter came out with this nappy on that was so full. And I was like, I'm like a really bad parent. This is abuse. Like, I'm like, I haven't changed that kid's nappy. And I'm busy painting it. And I was like, Lisa, like, this is irresponsible. And um, anyway, so, and I had to go, you know, because there's stuff you've got to do. Like, that's just being yeah. a human. Yeah. But, um, but I was really just so aware of how in the zone I was. Mm-hmm. And, and I just think it's part of the genius and part of the bit where I go, no, your, your brain is not, it doesn't have a problem. It's actually a gift. Yeah. There's a real genius to our brains mm-hmm. and the stuff that if you can just understand your brain and then be happy about it. Yep. No brainer. No, no brainer. <laughs> literally. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, it's literally the best thing you can do. Like understand what you're good at. And and when you talk to other people and you're honest about it, because when I say to people, oh, I can't read spreadsheets, they go, oh, I can't either. And they go, but mm. I thought I was dumb. And I'm like, no, you're not dumb. You're not dumb. Your brain just doesn't go well with boxes and lines. Mm-hmm. My accountant gives me my numbers in circles and I go, oh, what's that big fat wedge? And, and circles really do it for me. Um, and, you know, just knowing what you need yeah. makes and, everything better. And not being afraid to ask for that. Like that, that's the, one of the key messages out of um, this conversation is, is own yourself and mm. allow other people um, to fill in the gaps, but first let them know what what you need in order for you to be your best. Yeah, because if you if I'm if I'm good, if my needs are met, everything gets better. My yeah. business is better. My blogs are better. My keynotes are better. My children are better. The dinner I cooked better. Everything is good. 
Mm. right um but if i'm not at my best everything suffers including me yeah. and i just think we don't spend enough time honoring ourselves and we make ourselves wrong and mm. we let the world make us wrong it's like what if you That's weren't true. wrong what if you were right what if actually you were right and what if what you needed was really important and the world just didn't know god that's a good frame that's a that's beautiful too um because i think a lot of people think they are broken and well it starts off as a child so you, yeah. your parents go oh you know you, you never sit still and you never you should be concentrating and shut up and stop drawing attention to yourself and you get all these messages about what's wrong with us because mm-hmm. we get the mess you know we get domesticated basically at a very early age from the age of one we're getting constant messages about what's wrong with us um constantly it's and it's not anyone's fault but like your parents mm-hmm. didn't set out to make you feel like everything was wrong about you but they're so worried because of their conditioning about what everyone thinks and about people being judging them as a parent and so they're trying to go sit down get in a box don't bloody yeah judge you know don't cause any chaos then you get to school and they go well, that's wrong and you didn't do that and you didn't hand that in on time and you're wrong and that's wrong and i remember saying to my son's teacher can you she said i don't know what to do with him i said can you just catch him being good mm. and she went what do you mean i said next time he's doing something awesome can you tell him because all she was doing all day was going you're not doing that and you're not doing that and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't and he was just going oh my god yeah and it gives you no reason to want to be better yeah. when you're just getting hammered. Like, you know, I said, my son's like a Labrador. If you say good boy, he's a good boy. You know when you say good boy to a dog? You go, <laughs> good boy, and the dog goes. <laughs> and if you go, bad boy, they go, whore. And humans are the same. Yeah. And we spend so much time going, bad boy, Callum, that's bad, Callum. Callum, mm. you're bad bad that's bad and you look at your bank account you go oh bad and then you you know you get in your car and it's a mess and you go oh bad and it's like you just every every moment of the day yep. you're giving yourself an opportunity to go what's this is what's wrong with me my mm. car's messy and i wasn't on time and i was late and my bank account's an overdraft and and it's like yeah but what about what's right about you yeah like, what about all the glorious things you did today and, and a lot of a lot of the right stuff is, is is what's being beaten out of us so so through like the importance of um, of playing and being playful as a child uh, is uh, is that that's sort of nurtured to a point where it's like oh you can't play anymore and then adults were told you know being playful is unprofessional and I like to bring an element of playfulness into whatever I'm I'm doing and I think as with ADHD we're naturally playful people but we have to f- play the game which is not play at all it's working the game and there's a lack of playfulness there and i think that's when we feel stifled as well it's like well how do we actually um create some fun and make work more playful and that doesn't necessarily um mean mucking around but it actually produces more there's more productivity to it right i need the freedom to get up and wander and i remember i had a boss and he used to say to me where are you never in your office and i'm like no no I'm wandering around and I'm free ranging around. And when I do that, I notice things and I think about yeah. things. Emotion helps my brain and I'm better if I wander around. If yep. you sit at a desk, I'm like, oh, and and I get stifled and and it's not how I work. I need I need motion. Yeah. Um, and interesting things. I need to look at colors and I need to look out a window and I need, you know, I need my brain is just always mm. looking for something else. Mm-hmm. And if my brain gets bored, Nothing happen- Nothing good happens. Yeah. One last question about your brain, Lisa. If you woke up tomorrow with a different brain, so something you don't have now, um, not better, not worse, but it wasn't your brain, what would you miss about it? Oh, I'd miss how exciting my brain is. <laughs> yeah. My brain is so exciting. Like, it's just... My brain's just like a pinball machine, and I'm like, oh, 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 oh what's going on? Oh, 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 oh. And, like, it's just... It's so exciting. And people go, oh God, I must, I'd be exhausted being like you. And I'm like, I'd be so bored being like you. Like, I love <laughs> my brain. My brain's just like, nope, we're over here. Nope, we're over there. Nope, actually, we're not doing that. And I go, right, I'm going to sit down and journal. And then my brain goes, no, you're not. I go, oh, okay, right, journal closed. We're not doing that. Um, and it's just, it's like being in charge of a two year old in a garden. I don't know what's happening next. Um, and I kind of like it. <laughs> well, I like how you have this conversation with yourself as well. Yeah? 
Like this. You know, I do, and I actually literally talk to myself all the time. I'm like, listen, what are we doing now? I'm like, I don't know. Okay, what do you need? And what do you need is my favorite question. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you need? Oh, I need, and all we ever need, just quietly, is a feeling. It's yeah. all we want. Um, is is what's the feeling you want? I want to feel safe. If you want to feel safe, wrap yourself in a blanket while you're while you're working. If if you know if you want to feel free, take your pants off. Like just do whatever you need to do <laughs> to feel the feeling. Like if you want to feel, I go, oh, I want to feel very successful. So I'm like, good, get really dressed up and get a very expensive cup, and then you'll feel very posh. Or I want to feel really grounded, and I'm like, good, take your shoes off and get a pottery mug. Or you know, what do you want to feel? Yeah. And if you follow that, you're honouring yourself, I think. 100%. Mm. 100%. And I think um, the, like wrapping this up to allow you to get on with the rest of your um, day, which I really appreciate your time, um, I think we need to be honest in that this is the second crack we've had at recording this because in true ADHD fashion, um, I mucked up the uh, recording setting, settings and we had this brilliant e- episode, this gorgeous conversation, I think maybe 7% of which we covered today, doesn't matter, um, but I had your volume turned down, right? And so we're having a second crack at this. Also, this is scheduled for tomorrow and um, you gave me a call saying, hey, where's the where's the Zoom link? Let's get into it. I'm like, oh, I happen to be free, let's, let's do this. And like, I, I just love the flexibility and the... Um, Let's just go. Like, just go with it. Well, I'm really tolerant because I do stuff like that all the time. Like today, I literally got the wrong day. When other people do that to me, I I have to be tolerant because I expect that back. And so people who are very rigid, rigidity really upsets me. And people that are like, well, you said it was tomorrow and so I'm not coming now. I go, oh, you're a dick. You know what? I don't want to work with rigid people because... I can't be rigid. And it's like people who are really obsessed with time, they're putting the process over... Um, you know, they're like, well, if you're not here, I had a friend once who I went to meet for lunch, 12 o'clock lunch date. I turned up at three minutes past 12 and she was gone. And she sent a text and said, well, obviously you didn't take this lunch very seriously. Whoa. Uh, and I was like, well, you, see, you know what, bitch, I was trying to find a park. Like, just, and, and life happens. Like, yeah. I can't be bothered. I don't, I said, cool, I don't want to have lunch with you anyway. Because someone who's going to put a clock over me, not interested. No. And I think also though the the flexibility with that is um is so good but sometimes we can we can have uh double standards with with adhd there's a need for some routine in order to get some stuff done but also the need to go with the flow and i think we can get our our backs up when people aren't as flexible but we don't recognize when we're not necessarily being flexible i don't think this necessarily sounds like you but it's certainly me i need some some structure and routine in order to get some stuff like the fundamentals done but i love the freedom and flexibility in that to wax and wane so when you talk about well if i want to write a blog now i'll do that rather than saying at 2 p.m i should sit down and and write my blog i think it's the idea that sometime today i need to get a blog done um but when that gets done tomorrow And, and I Fair really enough. just like, you know, and it didn't happen. And you know what? The world won't close because no. you're not that important and no one's actually sitting by their inbox going, bugger me, Callum's blog didn't come on exactly when I expected it. Like, no. no if if they are, they've been disappointed for several months. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, just calm down because we beat ourselves up. And I go, hang on, so why are you beating yourself up? Why didn't do my blog? Okay, and whose life's changed? Yeah. No one. And yes, if you want to be consistent and professional and ideally you want to send it out at seven o'clock on a Tuesday, that's, but it's ideal. It's not life. Yeah. And, you know, part of having four kids and so I go, well, too bad. You know, the kid, the cat threw up, the kid cut his foot, the blog didn't go out. Like you've just got to put the right stuff first. Mm. Mm-hmm. And getting the right stuff right. It's a title of my next book, actually. Well, not my next one, but one of the next ones. Um, getting the wrong stuff right is something that we all suffer from. And it's so important Ooh. that we get the right stuff right. Yep. Because getting the wrong stuff right is about, you know, oh, I'm worried about, I'm, I'm not going to let my child achieve his dreams because he might not look like, you know, he might look like a loser in the eyes of the education department. Mm. Or, you know, it's like, oh my God, really? Yeah, priorities. We get the not... wrong stuff right all the time. And I think we're focusing on the wrong stuff because of our conditioning. So is that yeah. your next book? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, well, I'm writing... <laughs> <laughs> I I've love that. Maybe. I've got three books I'm writing and I can't tell you when they'll happen, but I have three that are in the in the works. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well that was one of my that was my last question. What are you working on next? So it's obviously a book. Something 
something happening around them? No, actually, well, I'm writing, um, I'm running a, a women's leadership program is my next big thing. So mm-hmm. that's really exciting. Tell women us about of that. Power. Women of power, um, women being powerful. And I, the reason, and it's a women's program because I think women need, I meet so many women who are either overpowered or underpowered. Mm. And it's that extreme. And it's like, how do you feel powerful? How do you be in charge? Yeah. And I think it's so important and it's important for the men actually so it's not about because i love men and i it's not an anti-man thing because someone said to me why are you doing men of power and i'm like well look i think men i think being a man in this day and age is really hard um because i think the that it's shifted so far back and there's all this men can't get anything right but women aren't <laughs> using their power properly because and we're just making men wrong and and then we're making children wrong and it's like women are, i think women are so powerful you know, the fact we can grow a human, I just love that. I go, yeah. wow, how extraordinary. We're such extraordinary humans. And that's not to take anything away from men, but it's to go, how can you be better? And most women are exhausted and they're playing small or they're just a bitch. And it's like, you know, I'm like, that's not going to get you anywhere. I don't care how clever you are and how qualified you are. If you're not a nice person, mm. no one wants to work with that. You're not getting any leadership position anytime soon because you're nasty. So, you know, it's like getting that right. So that's a big thing. Brilliant. Um, that's what I'm on at the moment. Yeah. Women of Power is the new big thing that I'm working on. Okay, so podcast, when... Lots of books. Podcast, lots of books. When all of that is up and running, because um, I know you've got so much on the go, where can they find that? And right now, where can they find you? Oh, lisaoneal.co.nz is mm. where everything lives. Um, yeah, and o- I'm sure... O'Neill with two L's. I've got two else. I've got two cats, two dogs, two boys, two girls. I've two of everything. I'm greedy. Wow. Um, for two L's. Good. Yeah. Cool. And everything's there. Wonderful. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Um, really cool to catch up. Um, always inspiring. Uh, always um, just you just light me up, and I think you light up everybody's world as well. Can't wait for uh, the podcast to come out. Very interested in these books and follow the progress of this program. And if I can ever help you out in any way, I'm forever indebted uh, to you, Lisa. So thank you so much hey, for I your time. Yeah, I should do this more. Do it again. All right. Well, we definitely will, because no yeah. doubt lots will happen. We'll I'll look imagine at that cup. The time and we'll imagine a place, and we'll see if we can get it to turn the sound up, and we'll nail it. <laughs> Hopefully so. What does it say on your cup? What is that? Oh, it says fuckity fuck fuck. Someone had it made for me because I swear a lot and they thought that was funny. Perfect. That's you. I love swearing. We, we should end on that note. You take care, huh? Good idea. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. Well, there you have it. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the You, Me and ADHD podcast. Um, my hope is that it's been worth your time of some value that it's been interesting or even enlightening, perhaps. Hey, if nothing else, I hope it's been entertaining. I really appreciate you showing up. You see, I really want to do some serious damage to the stigma and stereotype that ADHD is bad, uh, that it's wrong, and that those of us born with ADHD brains are somehow broken, because we're none of those things. And you can help with this too. If you were to uh, like, comment, or even share a link to uh, any one of these episodes or the entire podcast uh, just to one person i'll be a happy little adhd camper and i love camping i do so thanks for stopping by Uh, i hope to see you soon Uh, stay in touch get in touch in any way uh, you feel the need and i look forward to chatting until then peace love and heaps of impulsivity take care